The Navajo for many decades have relied upon the coal industry for the creation of thousands of high paid jobs and revenues. But all of a sudden, over the last few years, these mines have been shut down because the utility companies nearby, the, the power generators, no longer wanted to buy Navajo coal because um, states like California had passed laws saying, you know, coal is too dirty. So that put the Navajo into a really difficult situation. They were losing hundreds of jobs and millions upon millions of dollars in annual royalties that they had come to rely on to uh, pay for social services on the reservation. And they, they really didn't know what to do to replace this income. So along comes Entech, the, the Navajo transitional energy company. This is wholly owned by the Navajo tribe. It was created to acquire mining assets from all over the Navajo reservation. You know, Entech knew that if it was going to continue to help support the tribe, they needed to acquire more assets. And initially, the tribe thought that Entech could take over old mines that were on the reservation and were in the process of being shut down. But that didn't work out. Entech surprised the tribe and surprised the leaders of the tribe by making this deal um, almost a year ago now to acquire three enormous strip mines far away from the reservation up in Wyoming and Montana. So overnight, they went from owning one four million ton per year mine to owning four 50 million ton per year mines. If they hadn't shared their plans with the, the leadership of the tribe at all. And when I talk to the company, they say, well, that's because we were buying these assets out of bankruptcy court. You have to understand we were in a bankruptcy court proceeding. Yes. Uh, those proceedings, you're bound by very, very strict non-disclosure agreements. So uh, as we move forward, of course, the board was involved, uh, but uh, we were advised by our legal team that we could not talk outside of our team unless we had specific confidentiality agreements. We're an autonomous entity of the Navajo Nation, and we're governed by a outside board that's been given by the nation uh, the, the authority and the responsibilities to manage the company and take it in the direction that it wishes. And so for the past year, Entech has been trying to essentially explain itself and say, you know, we, we made this move because we have the best interests of the tribe at heart. Uh, we may not be able to generate dr jobs on the reservation, but what we do feel an obligation to do is to generate revenues and profits that we can send back to the Four Corners region, to the reservation, to help support the tribe and, and everything that they need to do. And that's especially important right now because the Navajo have been very hard hit by uh, COVID-19. There's no other Native American company that had been able to pull off such a large transaction, going out beyond the reservation and spending you know, roughly $100 million to take on such enormous assets. And now all of a sudden, the Navajo are the third biggest coal miner in all of the United States. The hole that they're trying to fill right now is about $40 million a year. That's the amount of money that the tribe was previously getting from the most recent mine and power plant that shut down. The amount of coal being burned in the United States to make electricity right now is lower than it's been at any time in 42 years. One of the reasons why Entech liked this acquisition though is because there's the potential to sell this American coal overseas. We visited with our uh, Japanese customers in November and last month uh, we visited with our Korean customers and we've uh, picked up and formalized uh, some additional business, uh, primarily uh, because uh, we're in it for the long term. 
this is not just like a five or 10 year project. When I talked to CEO Clark Mosley, he explained that there are such enormous reserves of coal up there in the Powder River Basin that they'll be able to continue mining these reserves for 20, 30, 40 years. Of course, whether they actually do that depends on whether we continue to use coal. Um, there's a lot of people who would like us to get rid of it entirely. If that happens in the United States, then this could turn out to be a very bad acquisition for the Navajo. They could get stuck with hundreds of millions of dollars worth of costs to clean up these mines and, and restore the land there. That would be the worst case scenario for them. It's, it's, a, it's a big risk that they're taking.